Uh, this is published in a very prestigious journal. Uh, it says it's interoception is an afferent neural system that represents all aspects of the physiological condition of the body. It might provide a foundation for subjective feelings, emotion, self-awareness. And I think from our perspective, again, what's fascinating is that somebody in 2016 from the one of the New York uh, hospitals, I believe, published this. The subtle body is an interoceptive map of central nervous system function and meditative mind-body integration. A subtle body basically, they said it had something to do with how the body was being mapped in the sensory nervous system. So this is kind of how the brain's sensory cortex looks. So this is called the primary sensory cortex. So these body parts that are made over here is basically in that part of the brain, this part of the body's sensory input is being mapped. And this is only one part of the brain where the sensations are mapped, but this is the most prominent part. So as you can see, there is like very disproportionate mapping, right? Like the hand is so big, the tongue and face are so big, the trunk, leg, foot, everything is very small. This is because obviously you have much more fine sensation in your fingertips and your face than you do in the back of your, uh, back of your, uh, you know, your, your, your hand, for instance, or actually in your back. So this is called the sensory homunculus. It is a uh, imagination of what the body would look like if each body part was resized according to the amount of space devoted to it in the sensory cortex. So as you can see, the hands are very big because you sense it very well, the tongue is very big. Um, and the other parts of the body are very small because you don't really spend that much brain power processing sensation from there. So think about this. So the previous paper I said, subtle body could be an interoceptive map. So we know that in all our traditions, there is this concept of the sukshma sharir. So is the sukshma sharir really a representation of how the brain is viewing the body? And this is not, I'm not saying this is equal to that figure because this figure is limited to external sensation. As you can see, like, you know, you don't have anything for like heart, intestine, you know, those sensations also are transmitted to the brain, but this is a one, like only one sensory modality. So the sukshma sharir, I would say is probably a more complex, a more data rich representation of the body. But in principle, I think they are on the right track. And I think the sukshma sharir really is how the brain really views the body.